All right, so this is a speedy little workflow for graining, regraining, and so forth, best practices. Uh, one based on a budget, one based on, hey, I got some money and I'm going to buy a neat video. <laughs> so just be aware, neat video is worth the price of admission, uh, without a doubt. Uh, so what I have here is Evan, and then I have this crappy CG object, which is basically a bunch of colors in red, green, blue to show the variations of the grain as it goes from different luminance values and different hues, so red, green, blue. So if I go ahead and just kind of like, you know, plaster that on top, you can see that, you know, there's green on Evan, but there's no green on the CG. So there's a whole bunch of uh, possibilities here uh, that you can work through. So the degrain process, uh, the worst is degrain simple, which again is based on an algorithm. It's not really sampling your stuff. And then there's the analysis version. Uh, furnace core, I believe this is, I don't know if it's furnace core, no it's not, it's a denoise. Denoise is really a great tool, except you will lose quality uh, and you will lose detail when you denoise. Whereas reduced noise, aka neat video, uh, will not do that. It has some kind of awesome algorithm which somehow holds up the detail and the sharpness. You could add sharpness after using denoise. Again, I'm not going to get into all of these. Um, as far as the regrains, the atypical uh, grain that you could add is kind of crappy. It's it's not the greatest. Uh, again, it's like it's just a synthetic grain. Luma grain is another one that's in the uh, Nuke Survival Toolkit. Grain Advance is a Nuke Survival Toolkit. Uh, this is nice because you can actually adjust the luminance information. So you could set the grain intensity as the luminance goes uh, across. So. Uh, again, I plan on going into this a little bit more detail later. And then a pixel fudger grain is great too, um, because it's it gives you an actual curve to actually do the intensity. Because it should be like noise increases as things get brighter, but it deceivingly, you look at grain, it always seems like it's greenier in the blacks and the whites. It doesn't get grainy. Well, that's just because the as the it, you know the the signal to noise ratio as it goes higher. Uh, it just becomes more brighter and whiter and you don't see the grain, even though the grain is increasing as the intensity increases. And then you have this sample footage, uh, regrain and DOS grain. So if, if you're basically broke and you don't want to buy, uh, you know, re uh, you know, neat video, I would say, you know, a compromise in quality would be using denoise and uh, regrain. So that's a good workflow. Uh, you might have to add sharpness to that and you plug in your sample again you can go online and find out tutorials but i like to go through the workflow that i use uh, which is reduced noise and dos grain uh, neat video and dos grain so again we'll just do this kind of shotgun style here uh, so here is the footage of evan and i'm going to go ahead and jump in and just add a i'll just copy and paste a, a reduced noise they just reduce a, they just created a new version which i haven't taken a look at yet uh, total price with taxes in the U.S. I think it was like 260, 270 bucks, so it was pretty pricey. Uh, but it's well worth it. I really think it's definitely well worth it. So here's the footage itself. Throw in the reduced noise, and we're gonna immediately do prepare noise profile. We're gonna choose progressive, and this is the speedy version. I'm gonna do auto profile. It's gonna try to find a sample uh, that's you know pretty basic, and it's gonna be able to pull the noise from that. Here you can see the noise levels. Uh, you can go ahead and sample areas if you wish um, and kind of update this, uh, which again, I went over with uh, uh, Fabian on this, so it's something that you can definitely check out uh, on the DOS grain demos that we've done before. But you just go to adjust and preview, and here's you're gonna see uh, you know things that look like, you know, you just kind of put the noise in here. So temporally, we're going to put this to um, high. The temporal noise, we're going to put this to negative 25. I'm going to jump over to spatial, put the luminance all the way up to 100, put the quality to high. And then the chrominance, we're going to set that to 100 and 100. And you can also save these as presets up here. So now you can see as we're kind of looking, we don't see any grain in these three three options here. So that's what you, if you click and hold, you'll see the grain and the it, that's been taken out. You want to like zoom up on this little quadrant right here and see if you're losing any detail. And for the most part, you probably won't be losing any detail in this. And so you can see if I just kind of click on there, it's really amazing. So with that, you just go ahead and hit apply. And with this, you would usually write this out. So you would probably do a write node and plug it in right here and plug this in and write it out as an EXR. 
So you would definitely write this out as an EXR and then read it back in and then just you know make a switch track here. So it's going to be computational expensive. So you can come in here and also just double check by doing your reduced noise and seeing that I lose any quality. It's pretty, pretty amazing for what it is. Okay, so with that said, um, I have my CG in here. Okay, so just add the CG in. And, and we're working in a, a workflow that has no grain whatsoever. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is bring in the good old DOS grain. So I'll throw that in here. And pull that over here. And it's, it's going to default to go to the comp. The comp is the CG, the degrain CG, you know, the no grain CG, I should say, with the no grain background. And now you want to have uh, the reality of the degrain plate. So I'll go ahead and put the plate in, and the plate will be this right here, the original. And we'll go ahead and pull that down there. And then we'll go ahead and take the degrain plate, put that right there. And now that's the reduced noise, like so. And again, you can follow the instructions on this. Um, I'm going to go to analyze this is going to take 10 frames out of these I don't know how many frame sequence and I'll just go ahead and hit analyze uh, first and again there's a whole bunch of instructions here I can tell you so I'll hit analyze so it's going to go through 10 frames in the whole sequence and look at the values you know in the luminances and kind of like sample the grain and once it's done, you're going to go over to adjust and hit uh, F. You can see the curves going up and up and up and up. So you want to take anything on the down pattern. Okay, like maybe this right here. And then just do a interpolate after linear. And anything on the downbeat, cut off. And we'll take these here. And again, right click after linear so it continues to go up. So now that you've done that, uh, we'll go back into the DOS screen. And now we're going to go over to Replace. And we're going to click on Activate Scatter. It's going to say make sure you have an area that's big enough. So I'll just go and put my viewer back to the original here and find an area that has a neutral uh, color information or neutral grain information. Otherwise, it's going to look funky. So I'll grab like this little area right here. And now I'll go ahead and put my viewer back to the DOS screen. And with that, you can see, if we go ahead and turn on the overlays, you can see where the grain is. It's everywhere right now. It's a newly created synthetic, or not synthetic grain, but it's actually a cologne stamp grain of this area right here. I usually uh, very quickly put one on the edge concealer, and I'll put a little bit of amplitude to break up any possible pattern that might show up in there. Okay, you can also change your cell, your cell size, you know, so you get more variety because it's just clone stamping into these little squares and you don't want everything too similar. So now that we've done that, I only want the actual grain to go onto the CG and not the original because if I take a look, I'll go ahead and turn off the overlay here and we can see if I take a look at the, the uh, original versus the new grain, we have the same consistency of grain except it's slightly you know, moved over. So this is something somebody might complain about. So we're going to keep the original grain and mask out only so that the CG and the feathered area of the CG will have the new regrain. So the way you do that is you simply go over here. And if you have anything that's CG in this scene, so if you, if you composited multi pieces in here, you can do a merge channel, if you wish. Uh, channel merge, sorry. And this basically combines different alphas. So if you have any paint strokes, uh, if you have any other like roto objects, so here we have this here, you can add them together, uh, multiple pieces, and bring those in and plug them into the mask. In this case, we're just going to plug this alpha mask, which we know is the alpha, into here. And now we just have to go to our replace and I'm going to choose a mask alpha and turn that on and to know that it's working right I can turn on the cell overlay and then you'll see that we're only getting s the the actual grain now in this and this area is basically the original grain so it's nicely feathered in there uh, it's all set up so all I need to do now is turn off the overlay and if I compare the original to the new uh, reality here. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll go to the original here. 
put my viewer to that, put my viewer to the DOS screen, and you can see that we have an untouched original grain, so no art director or somebody uh, might be upset. And then here we have the properly in implemented grain uh, as we kind of work flew here to these areas here. So it is a beautiful uh, marriage, and that is basically it in regards to uh, the w workflow. Now, if you have any advice or anyone's like, you're doing it wrong, uh, go ahead and tell me and I'll, I'll correct it. But I've found that that seems to be a good workflow. Um, again, you're going to have to pay the money. And then the only other thing I can tell you is, you know, some of these other grains, you know, if, if, if this stuff is simple, they can work too. Like, for instance, uh, if you go to D-grain noise, uh, you know, the, 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 the these, these I, I wouldn't mess with D-grain simple. I would not mess with grain. Uh, maybe not Luma Grain. Grain Advance is really nice. Uh, Pixel Fudger Grain is really a quick and dirty, uh, very I I inexpensive. These these nodes are very uh, they bog down your system, so they require a pre-render EXR sequence like Regrain and even Denoise. So I'll take this Pixel Fudger Grain, throw it over here, and I'll put it just after the CG has been added. And now you can see this. So you can c the beauty of this is you can change the size of the grain per channel. So you can hit the red channel, and you can see that we're changing that uh, under the red channel. And you can see if I go under the red channel here, I can adjust uh, the intensity. So right now it's it's all the way across, but as things get brighter, I can actually have the grain go away. So sometimes you can find when you throw synthetic grain, and you're like, oh, there's all this grain in the brights, but I just want it in the shadows. So you have the you can come in here, hit Control Alt Delete, and make adjustments to this curve on individual channels, so that doesn't happen. And you can also do it on the master channel. So it's a really great uh, quick uh, grain. I still find really awesome. A lot of people also use Grain Advance, which deals with the darks and softness and so forth. So I'll just do the old-fashioned way here. So you can do have X Noise, by the way. So you can use that, and that's in the new Survival Toolkit. So if you do D Noise, and again I'll just put a little dot node over here and here. And I'll come in here, and it's going to ask you for an input uh, data to uh, investigate. So again, I can choose, you know, anywhere, like right here, or maybe like a soft part of his skin here, which is more, you know, like that. And we can come in here and hit analysis, you know, analyze noise, and look at the before and after. You can see something has changed, but it hasn't really picked up. So you can come in here and increase the denoise amount. Uh, or you can come into individual frequencies, uh, high, medium, and low, and kind of adjust it as best you can. You can also blend this with the, uh, the luminance grain versus the chrominance grain. So if you want to bring that back, where you want to have a little bit of luminance grain in there, uh, you can. So again, the difference of this usually will be a loss. It's slightly blurrier. So you can see the sharpness that's here, okay, has been lost. So you know, you can compensate this by adding some sharpness, obviously. So now we have the CG that's been added on, and then you can come in here if you wish, and uh, we'll do a regrain. Again, this is a very computationally expensive uh, little little tool. So I'll put that in. I'll plug in a little backdrop to go back to the original footage, uh, like this. And it's going to sample the original grain, and you can see if you come in here, it's going to take a look, and you can kind of do from grain clip. It's going to ask you to find a flat area. So again, this is going off the original footage. So I'll go ahead and let that go through. You can see how it's already taken forever. And this is definitely something, obviously, this is at the very end of the pipeline, but um, you would have to obviously render out. It's going to take forever. So now we have the before and after of all the way through the process. And again, it does take a long time, but you can see the, the there has been a loss in uh, slight sharpness there. Um, so if you do find that you have lost some sharpness with the image uh, during the denoise, uh, you can obviously um, do a log to lin. So you do a log to lin, throw that in. And you could set this to log to lin. Actually, we can go ahead. Yeah, so log to lin. Sorry, lin to log. <laughs> and then you just copy that. And we'll do a log to lin to return. And then you can add some sharpness 
you always want to sharpen in logarithmic. So that's where the sharpness happens. And uh, we don't have to sharpen the CG. Uh, so we come in here and just take a look and you can see the sharpness has been the default settings has given us a little bit of sharpness there. So now if we go back to our regrain, compare that to our original file, we maintain a little bit of nice sharpness. Now the grain itself is obviously, uh, you know, different in its formation to the original. You know, the grain has kind of moved over a little bit, but it does have a good consistency there. Uh, some people might do like a key mix and again, uh, just take the original grain, uh, the original file here and plug in the, uh, you know, like something like this, uh, like the, the regrain here, and then use the mask to uh, uh, put that like right there. So now, now we have the original grain. Okay, so here is the original, here is the mix. And you might lose the grain pattern. Uh, let's see if we compare the two here. Yeah, I mean, it's not the best, and it's not, the, not really smart, but you can see we're the, <laughs> the actual green is expanding here. Um, so anyway, I don't know if I did that wrong. Tell me what I did wrong, folks. I'm always doing something wrong, right? Um, so again, the, the big thing with grain is just the fact that you want to make sure the grain is consistent all the way through, uh, the, you know, the transition from the CG to the, the plate here. So uh, pick your poison, write the comments at the bottom, and uh, we'll see what happens. Remember, help the community. Uh, don't tear it apart. Bye.